On today's episode of I Do Film, we have Christian Nolan Jones. In the directorial world, Atlanta native, Christian Nolan Jones has his heart set on being to Atlanta where John Singleton and Spike Lee were for their respective cities. Already, he has won the Georgia Filmmaker Award at the Oscar qualifying Atlanta Film Festival for his short film, Glitter Ain't Gold. More recently, you'll see his name in the credits for directing an episode of Isa Ray's HBO Max series, Rap Shit. I do film family, let's welcome Christian Nolan Jones. I am so glad to be here, sitting here with Christian Nolan Jones, Atlanta's own from the east side. Welcome. Thank you for sitting in on the I Do Film with Cardelia Hunter podcast. For sure. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So it's been a minute since we've seen each other, maybe a couple of months ago mm -hmm. um, at the screening of Glitter Ain't Gold. Mm -hmm. It was, we just were a little bit talking about how earlier that week it had um, shown at the Atlanta Film Festival. Yes. And yes. then um, that few days later, we did it at the High Museum. What a wonderful night. Yes, what a wonderful night. You know, I think that wonderful night probably started in South by Southwest. Mm -hmm. um, what mm -hmm. happened there? Um, so Glitter was accepted at um, South by. We we all took a trip out there, probably like 10 of us from the from the cast and crew. And um, yeah, we, we took home an award for best directing and community filmmaking. So that was really cool. Yeah. That was a good moment. And it, it sort of solidified the, the way that we make films, which is, you know, with our community. Yes, absolutely. Sure. Yeah. Um, since we're talking about Glitter and Gold, mm -hmm. where did the concept come from? <laughs> um, so I've, I've had the concept for Glitter for a while, but it, it started with me um, being in the fourth grade, wanting to get a fake chain to fit in with my classmates. Cause um the, the kid who I thought was the coolest in the class he had a fake chain, and um it was like a cross, and it was you know super iced out, and I was like okay you know I gotta give you one so I hustled up a little bit of money and I begged my mom to take me to the flea market and I, I ended up getting this this bulldog with ruby red eyes and um ended up breaking out my neck but it was all good <laughs> you know you know uh, the yeah. good the good part about um because I had the opportunity to see it at that screening as well as see it again, just uh, streaming online. Mm -hmm. um, the good thing about that story, mm -hmm. and I don't know for the audiences out there listening, if you haven't seen it, you need to see it. And I'm sure everybody will pick something from that just gave them that aha. Mm -hmm. What gave me that aha is because you worked mm -hmm. to get that chain. Mm -hmm. You know, that was good work ethic mm -hmm. at a young age. Mm -hmm. And you see that it paid off because look where you are right now. For sure. Because Glitter Ain't Gold is a little documentary on yourself, right? A little short on yourself? Yeah, I, I never thought about it like that, but it is a little documentary, you know what I mean? And, and, you know, that's just a moment that has stuck with me and I feel like it's a rite of passage for a lot of us. You know, that first time that you're going for that material item um, and, you know, whether or not it... it does what you want it to do for you mm -hmm. it, it's still you know an important moment i think in um in, in someone's maturation yeah while glitter and gold was in 2022 and it resonated so quickly with me because um i was able to see it with the family i'm mm -hmm. going to call because everybody from the community all the mm -hmm. actors and the actresses were there you know that was just like a real family i'm sure aha mm -hmm. moment for you mm -hmm. um how did that make you feel? Because you had did it in New York, right? You did it in California, mm -hmm. and then you came home to Atlanta. Yeah, so that's that's something that you know I've been trying to keep up with each of my films is like screening to the community. We did it first with with Print Shop, and then we did it a little bit with Brown with Blue, but you know COVID happened, so we had to stop. But I think what was really cool about Glitter was that it's actually about the community. It's actually about Atlanta. So seeing it resonate in those places like LA and New York, that was cool, but it just felt so right, you know, to be able to screen it um, in front of people that have probably known me since I was the age of Jabril and who, you know, seen me grow as a filmmaker. And it was, it was something that was like very, 
um, there, there was something about it that was great because I was truly comfortable, I think, with um, this film. It, it, it's, it's like the first film that I felt like, okay, this is who I want to be as a filmmaker, for sure. Right, absolutely. So as a filmmaker, mm -hmm. who are you? Um, I would say, I like to just tell people, you know, I'm, I'm a guy from the east side. Um, I'm, I'm someone who takes a lot of pride in, I think, being from Atlanta. And um, I want to be sort of like what Spike Lee or John Singleton, <laughs> you know, what they were like for um, their cities. You know, I want people to really understand the culture of our city and, and why we're important. And, you know, the, the, the bigger culture of, you know, the greater black community of America. Yeah. So, yeah. So since you said John Singleton and Spike Lee, mm -hmm. I have a little icebreaker game I want to play with you. Okay. This or that. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. I'm not going to even go there on you. Okay, cool, cool, cool. On huh? camera or behind the camera? Oh, behind the camera for sure. John Singleton or Spike Lee? <laughs> you said you go there. Yeah, I said I wasn't going to say it first. <laughs> uh... I love Spike, but well, I'm going to go John Singleton for that's sure. That's what's up. That's what's up. Fame or wealth? Ooh, that's tough. Wealth, I would say. Yes. Yeah. TV or movies? Movies. Movies, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Speaking of movies, um, I think you had another short mm -hmm. uh, before Glitter Ain't Gold, which was um, Brown with Blue, mm -hmm. and you had an amazing film festival run with that, mm -hmm. and it looks like you won 2021 um, Underground Film Festival? Yeah, yeah. We, Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so we won Best Local Short at the Underground Film Festival, and um, sort of like the success of Brown with Blue was my first, I would say the first time I got a little bit of notice in the industry. Okay. Um, so I don't know if... if people who I guess like aren't in the industry know about but know about this but when you when you first start in the industry you take generals with production companies and studios mm -hmm. and you're you know you're meeting all of these execs and all of these people who are you know behind the scenes and making the films and that was the first time where I think that my work was recognized by people like that so that was a cool experience to be able to um to see that you know how far I had come as a filmmaker to see that people, you know, actually cared about my work. So, yeah, that was cool. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's just go back a little bit mm -hmm. because be before you were this filmmaker to mm -hmm. the public, because mm -hmm. I'm sure you've been a filmmaker even before <laughs> that first documentary or short <laughs> film came out. Mm -hmm. Um Raised here, mm -hmm. went to Howard University, mm -hmm. HU. Okay, yeah. I'm going to give you, know, you your little props you know, on it know. and everything. Yeah. And then... You left from there and went to NYU, yes. the Tisch School so of Art. So tell me, you, you went to HU, so why mm. did you leave HU to go to NYU? Well, it, it, wasn't, <laughs> it actually was not my choice. Um, and what's funny is I didn't even know what NYU was when I graduated from high school. I had no idea, you know, that I would end up in New York. I, I always thought that I would finish at Howard and come back to Atlanta or, you know, do a grad program in LA or something like that. That was sort of, you know, my, my big dream or my goal. And I ended up losing my scholarship at Howard. And my mom was just like, you know, I can afford one year, but after that, we got to figure some things out or you got to come home. And, um, I was having so much fun there, but you know, reality, had started to sink in a little bit. And it wasn't because I was partying or anything. It was just the adjustment, I think, of going to a university was a little tough on me the first semester. Mm -hmm. And then the second semester the, and the one after that, I sort of picked it up. But I ended up transferring um, to NYU. They were the only school that accepted me, actually. Wow. Yeah. And at first they had given me, I think, a scholarship of like $3,000. <laughs> they want me to come to NYU. <laughs> yeah, so my mom was like, you know, congratulations, that's nice. You still got to come home. Yeah. And, um, you know, I I basically, she works in the university, she works at Emory, and I, I actually told her, um, you know, can you find the chairman of the film school's email? I want to just email him directly and see if I can find, you know, another option of finding some money. And um, she found the email. I emailed this guy. Don't know him at all. 
you know, doesn't know me from a can of paint. And basically he said, don't, don't make a decision until you hear back from me. And the next time I heard from him, I had been awarded a scholarship. Wow. Yeah. So. You were supposed to be there. I was supposed to be there. Off of my first film, it was, it was so crazy. And, um, I, I basically told him that in the email, like I told him I had just discovered filmmaking and I knew that this was what I wanted to do with my life. And if I didn't make that step, um, then I don't think that, you know, I'll be able to achieve that. Um, Joe Piccarillo. So shout out to Joe Piccarillo. All right, Mr. Piccarillo. Shout out to you. And Dean Mary Schmidt Campbell. Yeah, absolutely. Show love where love is due. Mm -hmm. So (laughs) then it's not by fate you're here. Mm -hmm. It's by faith that you're here. Mm -hmm. And because you went to HU Mm -hmm. and then you went over to NYU Mm -hmm. with a scholarship sitting up on you, Mm -hmm. which honed your skills to give you these film festival wins and everything like that. Um, I know once I read something a little bit where you said that you wanted to um, do for this city with John Singleton and um, Spike Lee did for theirs. Mm -hmm. And so we know that that's going to come all the way to full circle because of what we were able to witness at Glitter Ain't Gold. Um, So... With that being saying, now in order to get these festivals and to put your, you mm-hmm. know, school into work, there was something else that jumped on top of you to even mm-hmm. be who you are today as a great director. And that was your fellowship mm-hmm. um, with the shadow and directors on Lovecraft Country. Oh, you know what they are? Uh-huh. Oh, yes, oh, yes, okay. yes. For executive producers for J.J. Abrams and Jordan Peele. Tell mm-hmm. me, how was that experience? Man, it was... That was that was crazy because actually I think one of my first generals was at HBO and I remember they took me into this room and um there was like this poster of Insecure. It was probably like season two or three. And um I was just awestruck. So I'm like, what am I doing at HBO? Wow. Like I'm in the HBO offices right now. This is crazy. And um Christine Kim was who I met with and the first thing that she told me about was Lovecraft and she said I know you're looking for shadowing gigs um and I said that's what I want to do that's what I want to shadow on before I really even knew you know the gravity of like what the show was going to be just the log line that she told me you know it stood out to me and um it it took a year for me to actually be able to be on set and um to shadow and what was funny was that it was right down the street from where I grew up. Um, the studio was on Boulder Crest Road, yeah, you know. So I was just like, this is crazy, mm-hmm. you know. I'm, I'm staying in my mom's house while I'm shadowing here, and it's literally a 10-minute drive every day. What was that? that um, was that um, Black Hall? Yep, Black Hall, Black Studio. Hall Studios. Yes. And um, I'm seeing, you know, all of these people that, you know, I admire in the industry, Anjanou Ellis, Courtney B. Vance, Jonathan Majors, Michael K. Williams, rest in peace to him, Misha Green. Um, so just to be able to see them work and, and like the dedication they took every day to the craft, you know, and then just the serendipity of it all, you know, being where I grew up, that was that was definitely a 10 out of 10 experience, I would say. And um, also the other cool thing about it was the director that I shadowed, Charlotte Sealing, she was just so, I think, encouraging with me. You know, she would say, you know, you don't need to be shadowing, you're already a filmmaker. And (laughs) she would literally ask me questions like after she had her actor meetings. And I'll be like, I don't know, like, you know. And she's I'm like in you. Yeah, she'd be like, No, you do know, you know, like speak your speak your mind. So just having somebody like that in your corner too, you know, means all the world, I think. Yeah, yeah. So, um, as a director, mm-hmm. what do you feel your responsibility is to the audience? Mm. I think just creating with the intention, understanding, you know, the messages that you're putting out there. Um, and I think that more than anything, I have to make films that are true to who I am, um, that speak to my beliefs of the world. Um, you know, not only what I believe in currently, but what I believe the world can become. Um, and then, you know, honoring the past, 
I think is important too. So those are those are things that I I try to you know stay true to with each of my films, and you know I think that I've done a good job so far. I, I think to... you've done a great job. <laughs> so what is like the narrative as you as you you're doing your films? What is the narrative that you want to push out to the world about your film? Um, for me, I think it's about the human experience, and I want people to understand, you know, like that even if we don't have like the same background, that there's a common thread and you know, that that's, that we're all human. So I think that that's why people are able to relate so deeply to a film like Glitter, even if they're not from Atlanta, you know, they'll be able to relate to it. Um, And same with like a film like Print Shop, you know, people who had never heard of Rest in Peace Mm t-shirts were still, you know, relating to the film in in a way that like, I hadn't imagined at first, and I think that that was pretty eye-opening to me that, you know, messages can sort of, like, transcend a lot of barriers. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, let's jump into a little fun right quick. Okay. Yeah, rap shit. (laughs) (laughs) You um, got the opportunity to direct an episode of Ease of Rape, Rap Shit. Tell me about that experience. How was it? Man, it was was love. He said... Issa and you know the whole the whole team, Sarita, Chris Sanford, Denise Davis, you know, all of them, they they definitely just made that experience just so much better. And, you know, I think that um I think that I realized like this is what it's supposed to be like when you're making films. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of them have worked together on Insecure and projects even before that. And I I want to do, you know, the same thing with my friends. I want to keep creating with my friends, create things that are meaningful, you know, to me and other people. And also just my episode in general, I felt like was very relatable for me because we're we're seeing sort of um, the struggles of the artists. (laughs) And, um, you know, that's something that no matter like how it looks, you know, outwardly, you always go struggles. I actually was was like right before I got to set, you know, I had just finished Glitter and Go and I had put so much time and, and money and attention into like getting Glitter done that by the time I had got to set, I was probably like on my last dollar. <laughs> really? Yeah, so even that was like relatable to me in that moment because I was like, oh, I'm back sort of where I was as an artist before. I, I It was like unfamiliar a little bit, but at the same time, um, it was a little bit gratifying and humbling to know, like, okay, but I'm still moving forward in my career. Still yeah, still going. Even if I'm yeah. a little down and a little broke a little bit, right quick. It's yeah, all good. you know, I'm I'm waking up every day and I'm getting to work with Issa, who is just, you know, the the amount of sort of um attention to detail and the intensity that she brings every day. Her and Sarita are on set every day, you know, sun or, you know, rain or, or shine, you know, they were, they were there, um, making sure that they were getting the shots that they needed, um, and just the empowerment that they had in me, you know, when I pitched on it, Issa was like, I was, I was nervous and my voice was shaking and everything. And Issa was like, yo, you have no reason to be nervous. We're all fans of you on this call. And you know, for her to say something like that to me, I'm just like, man, wow, that's that's beautiful. Um, so yeah, that's that was that was an amazing experience for sure. Yeah, I yeah. can imagine. Yeah, that's season three. I mean, that's episode three, right? Episode three. Yep. Yes, yep. Absolutely. Um, some for the hood. That's the name of the episode. Some <laughs> okay, for the hood. Some for the hood. Give it the plug. Out. Yeah. So, are there any directors that you dream of working with? Mm, well, so I would say that my my big, I guess, North Star is Barry, Barry Jenkins. Um, that's my guy. And I think I come from his tree. Um, Barry, if, you, if you're watching this, work with me. Okay. Um, <laughs> please. Um, I love Jordan Peele stuff, too, right now. And then another person who I really love is Terrence Malick. Um, I love his work as well. I would say John Singleton, but, you know. Yeah passed away yeah. um, rest in peace yeah. but yeah yeah so tell me uh what's next um so i'm writing 
my first feature, Ken Folk, yeah. which is an extension of Glitter. Um, it's set five years in the future. We we get to see where Jabril's ended up. and But it's also a love letter to the east side a little bit because I'm talking about things that I experienced and um, trying to show a little bit of the magic of the east side as well. So I've been writing it for the last seven years and um, definitely I'm excited to have a draft that I feel really good about. And um, I know once, hopefully, you know, by the time this is out, uh, Trey will have that draft in his inbox. Yeah, I know that he will, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> absolutely. For sure. Well, Christian, it's been a pleasure. It has been, I'm, yes. I'm so glad that you came to sit down with me. Thank well, you all so our much listeners for out me. there, you know, let them know where they can find you. Um, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Y N G Y H W H, or you can just look up Christian Nolan Jones, and I'll probably pop right up. Um, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank y'all. Well, that's a wrap for us today. But make sure you tune in every first and third Tuesday of the month to catch more jewels on I Do Film. Follow us on all social media platforms at I Do Film Atlanta. And don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe to the podcast. I'm your host, Cardelia Hunter. Thank you for joining. I'll see you next time.